We begin with a look back at what happened Saturday in Colorado Springs. The 24th ranked Cougars kicked off with Air Force for the final time as Mountain West Conference opponents on a very unique day at the Academy. True Blue's Jerem Jordan reports. Saturday, September 11th, the BYU Cougars traveled to Colorado Springs to face the Air Force Academy in the Cougars' final Mountain West Conference opening game. BYU played a strong first quarter led by Riley Nelson, who ran for 24 yards on third and 19, 11 yards on fourth and two, and completed a 16-yard pass to J.J. Luigi on third and seven. Option, pitch, Luigi. it's a cakewalk. Cougars on the board first. The Falcons answered less than two minutes later with the 37-yard reception by Mikel Hunter to tie the score. The Cougars, led by Jay Keeps, were in a position to score again for a DeLuigi fumble after a 43-yard run. 20, 50, 10, inside the 10, fumble, picked up into the end zone, and Air Force falls on it, touchback. BYU forced a punt and took a 14-7 lead after a five-play, 49-yard drive capped by a Riley Nelson four-yard TD. It was the last points BYU would score. Air Force quarterback Tim Jefferson touched down from five yards out to tie the game with 9.42 to go in the half. Riley Nelson gave the Falcons their second takeaway of the game, and a 33-yard reverse by Mikel Hunter gave the Air Force the lead for good. Mikel Hunter, who's already visited the end zone once, he hurdles on his way again. Mikel Hunter, touchdown Falcons! Jay Keep's second possession resulted in an interception, and the score was 21-14 at the half. Did you see any weakness with BYU you think you can take advantage of? Uh, they're pretty good all across the board. So uh, they got a good team, but i got to tell you, the Air Force, Air Force Falcons got a pretty good team too. They're outplaying us right now. We need to take the momentum back. The Cougar D forced a punt to start the third quarter, and BYU nearly turned it over a fourth time, twice, but punted. Supplemental draft as Nelson has the butterfingers here. Senior linebacker Shane Hunter picked off a Tim Jefferson pass, but the Cougars began the first of three straight possessions that ended in punts in Riley Nelson-led drives. Jay Keeves did not play in the second half. In the mix, I just don't understand why he's not in the game. And On fourth and two, Jonathan Warzika ran for a 46-yard score to make it 28-14. Jonathan Warzika, touchdown Falcons, 46 yards for six points. BYU appeared to recover an Air Force fumble at their own five-yard line, but the Falcons scored the next play to make it a final of 35-14, the Academy's first win against BYU since 2003. We didn't play nor coach in a manner today to give us uh, a different outcome. I think Air Force made every critical play and really, um, I thought, played better offensively, defensively, and on special teams, so it was a complete victory for them. I gotta say, it was ugly, you know? There were times in this game when it was just downright ugly. BYU finished with 221 rushing yards, but just 88 passing yards, the lowest amount since 2003. The rushing attack was led by J.J. Luigi, who accumulated 103 yards, while Nelson ran 20 times for 95 yards. Jerem Jordan, True Blue. True Blue's Jerem Jordan is with us. It seemed like this was the first game of the season for BYU as compared to how they actually played in the first game of the season when they beat Washington. You know, for some reason, the inefficiency of the offense made itself manifest, the inexperience that we thought, hey, maybe we're going to play better than this the rest of the season really came out. The good news for Cougar fans is the great teams of 06 and 07 started 1 and 2. Granted, you, you had a John Beck and a Max Hall. You'd like to think that Riley Nelson and or Jake Heaps could become that, but they started uh, out weak to start the year and so far 1 and 1. But only game two. Only game two. Well, we saw in the first half a switch off of every possession for the new quarterbacks, but then we got into the second half and it was all Riley Nelson. So what happens against Florida State? That's interesting because Bronco Mendenhall Monday said that he thinks that he'll evaluate and put in a guy based on situation. Now, whether that's Riley Nelson to come in sporadically to alleviate the pressure and have a quarterback draw and let Heaps just throw it around, or vice versa, where you bring in Heaps when you want to change your pace, I'm not sure. But what we do know is that we don't know who the guy is yet, and I don't think BYU does either. Well, history shows it's never a good idea to play Air Force early in the mm -hmm. season. That's just when they're sharp in the top of the game, and they were just that yeah. on Saturday. Well, Florida State is a lot different from Air Force, but we saw at Lavelle Edwards Stadium last year that they are fast, they are physical, and this year they are the home team. So what do you expect Saturday night? 
Well, it's going to be a, a, certainly a difficult contest for BYU. It doesn't help that they have a senior quarterback and an interesting guy in Christian Ponder who's he's completed an MBA already. He's working on a second graduate degree, fifth-year senior. The guy's experienced and uh, is mobile and ate BYU up last year. I'm sure that BYU remembers the bad taste in their mouth uh, from last year's game, and that were, will certainly be motivating. But how will BYU respond, and how much character does this team have with the lack of experience? We'll find out Saturday. Equally as strong of a test for the two quarterbacks as it will be for the entire defensive unit Absolutely. on Saturday. Jeremy, thank you.